tonight on Keeping Up with Sarah X. Kyle means well, but his style's just a little drab. When I was going on dates, I would get comments. People would say, why don't you dress up? Because I'd always have my Costco convertible pants. Sarah was like, I don't know. And I'm like, I know. And there's no cell phone service. We're just basically driving and praying that we're going to find the other people. So I was informed that Dan, Raymond, and Peter were gonna go to this track to go test out their mile time. And I'm not interested in finding out my mile time, you know, that's for me to know and you to never find out. But I was like, I like biking, so I'll bike with them. Hi, I'm Raymond. I am a graduate student, but I'm staying in San Francisco for the summer and I'm from Pennsylvania. We went on a bike ride from here to the Golden Gate Park. We found a track there and it was like four miles away, but it was the closest track in the city. Uh, we took the wiggle. Uh, I had never taken it before, but it does this like wiggly path inside the city so you don't have to go up all the hills. We thought no one was gonna be there for some reason, but we get there and everyone's out there like pumping push-ups. There were people doing like kickboxing. And I'm like, this makes me feel guilty for not working out for like the past two weeks. And there were people like sprinting and we were like a little bit intimidated. Spanish uh, haciendas going on. Has Did you say haciendas? Yeah, <laughs> right? Kind of haciendas style. When we got there, we immediately tried warming up. This is how I warm up. <laughs> I, do, I do a West African dance routine too, which you will not see. <laughs> I noticed there were some very different styles of warm-up. We had Dan, who was like super prepared. He was like jogging in place. I just sit here, make sure that I can get as much rest as possible before exerting myself. Peter was on his phone the whole time and he did a single lap on the track uh, at like a snail's pace. My warm-up strategy was to conserve energy. And then Raymond was doing some stretches, so I was like, I can already tell how this is gonna go. I honestly can't say anything because I didn't even run a mile. <laughs> Peter got approached by somebody who was in the kickboxing class. I think he was trying to become a kickboxer instead of. I don't know, it didn't make any sense. I'm just in like soccer mom mode. I'm like guarding all their stuff while they're warming up and running. So we decided to do a staggered start where we each had different goals in mind. So Peter's was to go under seven minutes, uh, Dan's was to go under six minutes, and mine was to go under five minutes. So uh, we let Peter start a minute ahead of Dan, who started a minute ahead of me. And the goal was for all of us to finish at the same time. So then the race happens and Peter's off. And I'm out here waiting, like I have two more minutes to try to beat him. So then Dan goes a minute later and then I go a minute later and I pass Peter on one of the first turns. I was watching him run. He was literally like a gazelle. He was like, literally just like bounding. Raymond is like a professional athlete. I was determined to pass Peter a second time and beat him. And I did with like 200 meters to go. He lapped me two times and then he made fun of me. I felt like kind of slow after. Dan was way ahead of us though, and he killed his time. Did you do the champ first? You mean the champ. The champ. We all had different uh, goals today. Peter's was to get seven flat, Ben's was to get six flat, mine was to get five flat. Yeah, Ben. Damn. Sorry, ben. ben. No, you're Dan. Ben. You're ben. Ben, why? They all did very well, in my opinion. Ben. Um, yeah. ben, uh, ben did okay. Like, really, really okay. Yeah, like, Incredibly average. My goal, my goal was uh, six minutes even. I got uh, five minutes 44. What'd you my, get? My goal was five flat. I got 457. Raymond ran it in like four minutes, which is insane. I can't even walk up to the third floor in four minutes. Like, what is this? What was your goal? My goal was seven flat, <laughs> and I got a little above that. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's mile time was like seven minutes, which is still amazing. And he was good at sprinting. We, we did a sprint after and, and I beat him. <laughs> good job, uh, guys. Thanks. <laughs> good will, but free. As a graduate adult in 2017. Wait, Wait I <laughs> That day was just, you know, business as usual. I'm being cute as always. It's such a hassle, darling. What can I say? They put out this one donation bin. 
here at Tribe. So Raymond, Anthony, and I were digging in these bins. Maybe. What size is this? Uh, if that was my size, I would love both sets in that. It's a both US that's five. I, oh, I hell no. That. So we're rummaging through this bin without any shame. My feet are way too big. I'm a size 13, so I can never find shoes for me. Oh my God. There was some treasures in there, to say the least. This is like what you play at night, right? Oh, somebody got a bunch of Oh, for like ambient free. sounds or something? What do you want to hear? Oh, ocean sounds. Ocean sounds? Oh. That's not, that's, not that's a lullaby. Sounds. That, okay, oh. that was We were kind of warming up because they were going to go thrifting the next day. This could be a look. Really this could be a look. I found it first. Thank you. <laughs> there was some beautiful other things that I wanted that Raymond took. Raymond, I'm coming for you, bitch. Anthony's just jealous that I found some shirts that he liked first. And also, I'm pretty petite, so like, I know what shirts fit me. And I was like, Anthony, those aren't for you, they're for me. And he was like, I want them, I want the pineapples. I'm like, it's mine, I found it first. How do we feel about this pot from Goodwill? I'm telling you, it's Goodwill, but for you. I mean, that's a sign. <laughs> what is this? Oops. Is that like a mask? Yeah. Is this a bird beak? This beak thing, which was like used during the bubonic plague situation. I was like, I don't know who. <laughs> oh my God, Wait, it is. This is definitely, it's one of those masks. This is definitely false. <laughs> <laughs> Old fashioned Victorian like doctor's beak thingy. You know that bird thing that doctors where people are dying with like the bubonic plague or whatever. It's definitely used for like, you know, sexual things. <laughs> no way. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd be careful, I'd wash that. Who yeah. Put this in here? I don't know whose that belongs to, but now I gotta sanitize my hands. That was the weirdest find we found in this bin in the middle of a communal space. <laughs> I kinda want it, not gonna lie, but I have to wash it first. That would be a good Halloween costume for the I would, wear, I would wear it anyway on Tuesday, to be honest. The final loot result. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. Already. Oh, Hello. <gasps> I love this. Yeah. Wow. And, and I love that print. Yes. We're thriving. We're serving Ooh. hippie, we're serving like Burning Man style. <laughs> a group of us decided to go on a thrifting trip around town. The main purpose of it was to revamp Kyle's wardrobe because he just likes to like, his outfits don't really match. I'm Kyle, a uh, roboticist from Canada. Uh, I program cars here to drive without drivers. Uh, and anything, anything robot stuff, basically. Uh, that's what I'm all about. Kyle means well, but his style's just a little bit drab. We were trying to give Kyle a makeover because he was just so nervous about his first dates and he's like, all I wear are the same trousers every day. Like, I bought them when I was in eighth grade. Here, these are from 2018 brand, spring edition, Costco BC clothing convertible cargo shorts. I try to I try to work pretty hard at most things, but one thing that I was pointed out to from friends was that my fashion sense wasn't really on point. When I was going on dates, I would get comments, people would say, why don't you dress up for like a date and stuff? Cause I'd always have my Costco convertible pants. Here's, here's them when you adjust them into the short version. <laughs> so we have this just like to reduce friction. You know? So I didn't believe those people, but then after a few everybody's says so, uh, it was like, okay, it's time to go shopping. I wear Costco brand Kirkland adjustable BC clothing cargo pants. I have 12 pairs of these pants and I really love them. These ones have like lining inside. It's thick inside with like three C's. <laughs> His style was basically all black, like cargo pants, black workout shirts mountain climbing shoes off oh. and he came to me recently asking for help with his fashion and so i agreed because i am generous so anthony reached out and said hey we gotta we gotta doll you up i didn't know what that meant we just went thrifting on the way over raymond showed us this kid spot version of thrift shop by macklemore we're in the car and i'm like have you guys heard kids about thrift shop no oh. Just the fuck are we playing it now? I just remember Kids Bop from back in the day. I thought they were so cool. This thrift shop song was popping though. I'm not gonna lie. Like It is by far the best Kids Bop production to date. We were just jamming in the Uber. I'll have it in slow-mo. Really awesome. Gonna rock some tags. Only got $20 in my pocket. <laughs> we shopped all over. We didn't care whether we were in the women's or the men's section. You know, we were androgynous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You look nice with flowers on. 
<laughs> this one's actually like a woman's shirt because you know it reveals my back a little bit. Sarah was like, I don't know, and I'm like, I know. Damn, oh, man, I really I'm a party girl, yeah. <laughs> you know, flowers for the party. Uh, I got new pants. I feel like I'm, I'm a new person. I'm pretty proud of that. And we queer eyed him. They look very nice, but they're they're really tight. Uh, I just started cutting weight. Because oh, I think that's easier. Okay. Uh, we got some darker blue pants here. Whoa, as well. those go with a lot of things. Yeah. That boy needed some color, and we colored him up big time. <laughs> Look at this. Well, I really like them actually. Pretty nice. I personally like wearing this one around the house. This one I really like because it's immediate to put on. You just go like around. It's very casual, and I love that the like the ease of use of this shirt. We're taking big moves here in the Bay Area, and that's what we're all about. And then after thrifting, we were like starving because shopping is a lot of work, guys. It's a lot of work. So we were like, we need some food. Kyle took us to this mall in Japan town. I got like sushi there, people got ice cream. <laughs> we look like an acapella group right now. My gosh. So there's this one dessert. It's basically a fruit loop dipped in like dry ice or something. This ice cream called I think Dragon's Breath. But it just gives you this fog breath so you can crunch on it and you basically explode with fog out of your face from all face holes. Your face, like seriously. Dude, people were like vaping in the mall. They kept calling it Dragon's Breath, but we all know what it was. It was like cool vape tricks, bro. Wait, it's hot? It pops in your mouth. Oh, said. it pops. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Don't bite it. Does it dissolve or something? Does it hurt? Yeah. No, it doesn't hurt. It's just weird. It okay. doesn't hurt, I promise. Wait, 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 wait. Here, I'll, just grab a sticky stick. A sticky okay. stick, huh? It was so weird, but so cool. Wait, I'm here. Yeah, and then just put it in your mouth. Don't bite it on it with your teeth. Okay. Put it like, and it felt weird on the tongue and in, in the teeth because of the dry ice, but still, it was fantastic and it was such an experience. Try it. Okay. All right, give me one of the red ones. Can I just one? It, it was not working for me. I don't know why. I, I just, I couldn't get the smoke to come out of my face. I was able to get the dragon's breath a little bit through my nose and through my mouth a little bit. It took some effort, but what can I say? Fabulous. Whoa. Oh, so you kind of have to like blow on it. <laughs> That's so cool. It's right. literally fog. Maybe I'll try one. Yeah. I don't know. It was just like a whole different world. I just felt like I was like transported out of America and just into like a tiny little part of Japan. It was nice. I think ultimately it was a win. The kids love it. We love it. So it's all about. Kyle decides for his 24th birthday that he wants to go hiking. I, was, I wanted to go hiking because I was like, I walk every day. What do I want to do on my birthday? I want to walk somewhere. And I was so excited for this hike. We had like 18 people show up. We get there and there's no cell phone service. We're just basically driving and praying that we're gonna find the other people. I suck, Sasha. You know, it's a 10 mile hike and I'm like, let's do this. I love hiking. 10 miles seems like a lot, but we'll get through it. We eventually found one group. We got lucky. So go down and we're waiting. And we don't know where this other group is. We're debating where we're gonna leave them or not. And right as we're like about to kind of finish debating this, they finally pull up. Oh, hi. <laughs> We're glad we didn't just start. It would have been hilarious if we just started walking in and they pulled up. Oh, the hike was awesome. It was so much fun. We needed, we all needed to get outside. <laughs> and you could tell because there was very little complaining. Everyone was singing. Everybody did really good. It honestly was not that bad of a hike, but some people like to complain. I swear these people are like sprinting up this mountain. I'm like, slow down. I can't breathe. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I was literally like, slow down, let a girl drink some water. It was fun. There was people, there was nature, there was bugs and dirt, and it never ended. It was crazy. I thought there were gonna be like, at least five of us that just like break a leg and we had to get, you know, age packed out of the, the place. Wow, oh, that hike was so cool. It was beautiful. It had so many different like, Scenes. We, like, one minute we're in a forest, then we feel like we're in a desert, then we're like with these streams, and then this big lake that we can't jump in because it is spring water, people. We got to the lake, and I was like, I'm going in. And there was a sign that was like, um, this is drinking water, so like, please don't swim in it. And I was like, I don't care. Like, I've done this before. There's animals that swim in it. Like, who cares? And people were like, mm mm mm, like, you're gonna contaminate it. And I was like, 
party poopers. People still wanted to get in. I'm like, I don't wanna drink your freaking skin cells. Like, don't jump in their water, damn. It took so long. Like, okay, the first half was really enjoyable. And then for the journey back, it just never stopped. Some people start dying like Sarah here. The problem was on the way down, my knees start hurting so bad. She's walking with almost her foot out and legs in somehow. Probably not like a penguin, but definitely not normal. And just complaining all the time how her knees are hurting. Not even kidding, I kept falling on the ground because my knees would buckle. I made like Jordan carry my bag because I just could not carry that much weight on my back. I was like falling every other second. We just kept going and going and going. And after countless are you there yet, we finally made it to the finish line and my ankles to this day still do not forgive me. Who held the team back? Well, it wasn't me because I'm cute. I'm not going to name names, but Raymond. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he means well, but I mean, had he not taken those clothes from the thrifting bin that I wanted, then maybe he would have gone a little bit faster on the hike and not, you know, slowed everybody down. I'm pretty sure that Anthony told you that I was the one who slowed us down on the hike. I'll have you know that I run 60 miles a week at seven minute flat pace. So I am the most fit person for any hike. I did not slow us down. That was fun. It made me feel like I was running like boy scouts or girl scouts or just human scouts in this case. decides to host some art nights every week, which I love. I love art. I love painting. It's one of my many talents. I'm Sarah Proctor. I'm 25. I've lived here in the Bay Area and the Pacific Northwest. I've been vegan for like four years now. And yeah, I love art. But do you think that like ignorance is we all got together as a house trying to find a way to support the Black Lives Matter movement. When the protests first started happening, um, I got really angry and like I had put up in the kitchen this like big thing that was like, you know, if my house was up, was burning, like, you know, I would be really, I don't know, it was just like the whole message was kind of an angry tone because I had felt really angry, you know, just about the, obviously, the deaths that had taken place and just our response. And 22 rounds were shot into her house, no knock warrants. And so I had that up in the kitchen and then I was going to protest and kind of left and then I came back around and I was like, you know, I'd really like for the community to be involved in an event and kind of just have something we can all talk about. We all have different opinions on it, different perspectives, and we all have different ideas of what works in regards to protesting or rioting, but we all agree that things need to improve, bottom line. And so we made a Black Lives Matter tapestry to hang in our kitchen. It's a huge tapestry. I wrote um, Just Mercy along the top and I wrote some names of people to remember. I kind of pulled up some art for inspiration and I just was painting away. Some people drew murals, some people um, wrote some like symbols or names, and some people were just in charge of coloring and beautifying this whole tapestry. While we were doing that, we had a really nice deep conversation about our own thoughts and perspectives on the movement and racial injustice and how it does or doesn't affect certain people in the house differently. And it ended up turning into like such a beautiful moment and like so many good conversations came from it and I felt like that was one of the most important things I've done in my life. Well, and experiencing it, it's like having these tough conversations all the time. Which just like seems so weird because it's like we're all friends and like we all talk about shit but it was like it felt like really impactful to me and to everyone involved so it was yeah it was really cool and um, yeah I'm really glad that we did it. Black Lives Matter, what that means to me, you hear this a lot on social media when people debate black lives versus all lives and you know I'm just going to say what's been said Black Lives Matter doesn't mean that all lives don't matter. It means Black Lives Matter too. I mean, as a Black man in modern America, if I was to step outside, I am risking so many things that other people just don't risk. 
even in broad daylight, even in San Francisco, you just never know because people are everywhere, which means there's racism literally everywhere, even in the Bay Area. So I could easily step outside in daylight, nightfall, doesn't matter. All it takes is just one extreme racist to ruin my day and possibly end my life. And that's something that many people don't realize. And it's not that all lives don't matter, it's that black lives matter too. And for a long time, that's just not the case. It's not the perception. It kind of gets swept under the rug. So this movement, I'm saddened that it's taken this long and this much extreme measures to get people to see it, but I am glad that people are seeing it. I am so proud of what it looks like, and I feel like it represents a diverse group of people who don't all know everything, but they're at least showing that they're trying to understand. Now we have the tapestry hung up in our kitchen, and it's honestly a very beautiful piece of art. I could see it. If any museum wants to hit us up and hang, it, hang that tapestry up, let us know, you know? We'll let it go for a couple thousand dollars.